Hi there. How do you do? I'm your new neighbor, Herman Munster. So very nice of you to call. Down, Spot, down. Uh, spot. Uh, down, boy. Scott. <laughs> Spotty gets so excited when we have company. Won't you come in? Ah, fine. Why are you staring at me like that? I mean, haven't you ever seen a person with green skin before? Or did I bolt my head on crooked this morning? Oh. Oh, I bet you're always nervous when you meet new people. <laughs> well, that's very understandable. But you know shyness can be carried too far. Now, you take our mailman. When I think of how shy he is, I positively shudder. <laughs> Instead of coming to our front door with the mail, he just throws it over the fence and runs. <laughs> so untidy. But I guess I shouldn't complain. You know, it takes all kinds of people to make a world. Some folks like sweets and honey, and weather bright and sunny. Well, it takes all kinds of people to make a world. It's kooky and it's zany, not to like it when it's rainy. But it takes all kinds of people to make a world. I only go out walking when it's dark as pitch. The kind of night that's oh so right for man or witch. It's positively eerie when folks are bright and cheery. Well, it takes all kinds of people to make a world. <laughs> it's positively eerie when folks are bright and cheery. Well, it takes all kinds of people, yes, very funny people. It takes all kinds of people to make a world. <laughs> Well, now, uh, let's not stand here. Why don't we both go in the living room, hmm? Here we are. Now, take a chair. Oh, no, uh, not that one. That's an antique we bought at the prison surplus store. <laughs> Let me sit down and show you how it works. Now, my arms go here. And my legs here. There, now. I'm all strapped in. Now, to turn it on, you just pull that switch. Right there. Here we go. Ready? <laughs> pull. Ooh, that feels good. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, it's amazing how 10,000 volts can relax a body. Herman, where are you? Oh, that's Mrs. Munster. Right here, dear. We have a visitor. Oh, who is it, Herman? Just a little friend of mine who happened to drop by. <laughs> how nice. I'm always dying to meet new people, and everyone is always welcome at the Munsters. When you're passing by the Munsters, you will give us such a thrill if you'll just walk up and knock upon our door. It's a lovely place to visit if you've got some time to kill, and it's not like any house you've seen before. Out in the back, the wolves are howling. Shrieking bats fly overhead And when we give a party We really give a party It's guaranteed enough to wake the dead Don't wait to be invited Step right up and give a knock Oh, so lightly and politely on our door We'll be happy and delighted if we hear your gentle knock. Oh, so lightly and politely on our door. Oh, so lightly and politely on our door. Come in. Oh. Oh, uh, that was very nice of you, Lily, to make our friend feel at home. Now, why don't you introduce our guest to some of our pets? Oh, I'd just love to. Uh, let's go over here and meet the raven who lives in our clock. Uh, lots of folks have a cuckoo clock, but we have the only raven clock in town. Raven, come out here and meet someone. Uh, I said, come on out, raven. When are you going to start doing what you're told? Never more! Never more! That bird is getting fresher every day. <laughs> I know. If there's anything I can't stand, it's a smart Alec raven. Oh, uh, say, Lily, maybe our guest would like to meet our kitty cat. <laughs> Why, of course. Here he is lying on the sofa. Just listen to him purr. <laughs> if you rub his ears, he'll meow for you. Go ahead. Don't be afraid. There. Wasn't that cute? You're a nice little kitty, aren't you? Kitty likes visitors. Maybe the next time you come over, you can bring a friend. And if you can't find a friend, we'll help you dig one up. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of digging, Herman, our guest hasn't met Grandpa yet. Oh, well, we can go meet him right now. Good. Oh, and while you and your visitor go down in the dungeon, I'll see if I can find some cookies or something in the kitchen. I just might have some warm lady figures in the oven. See you soon. Well, so, if you're ready to meet Grandpa, let's open up this trap door and drop in. <laughs> Come on, follow me, right down these stone steps. Oh, uh, say, uh, be careful, they might be slippery. Grandpa always keeps it comfortably damp down here. <laughs> uh, Grandpa? Grandpa? Hmm, I don't see him. Oh. Oh, there's his pet bat, Igor. But I wonder where Grandpa is. Uh, say, let's look over here. I see he left one of his experiments on the front Bunsen burner. Let's take the lid off this cauldron and see what's cooking. <laughs> mm. Must be a new batch of vulture noodle soup. I wonder if... Looking for someone? <laughs> Grandpa. Now look what you made me do. I dropped that iron lid. You know how it frightens me when you appear out of nowhere like that. I'm so sorry, Herman. <laughs> well, you might have scared me right out of my skin. And you know how hard it is for me to get back into it again. And you stop laughing, Igor. It is not funny. Boy, who's your friend, Herman? Oh, this? This is someone who dropped in to see us. How do you do? And welcome to Grandpa's little playroom. You can usually find me hanging around down here. Yes, Igor, yes, 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 I know. You and I hang around together. <laughs> but be quiet while I show our guest around. Now, you see, some people call this my den, or my cave, or my dungeon. But I call it my laboratory. 
It's a hard word to spell, but it sounds so scientific. <laughs> Here's Grandpa's laboratory. Now come on and follow me. I'll show you mystic magic things from A right through to Z. Now A is for abracadabra, a magic word I know. Now B is for those friendly bats all hanging in a row. C is for my cauldron that's bubbling on the fire. And these for dark and dismal, two words that I admire. E is for electric chair, my very favorite seat. And F's for Friday the 13th, a day that can't be beat. A G is for ghosts and goblins, each night here they hold sway. And H, of course, means Halloween, Ooh, that happy holiday. Now, I is for a human, like a, a, a demon or a ghoul. And J is for Jack the Ripper. I knew him all through school. Now, K is for our kitty, who prowls around at night. And L is for flashing lightning. Oh, what a pretty sight. Now, M stands for the monsters, a fun group, one and all. And N is for the nighttime, when creatures creep and crawl. O is for the wise old owl who lives in our treetop. And P is for poison ivy. We've grown a lovely crop. A Q is for slimy quicksand. I'm sure you would have guessed. And R is for the raven who makes our clock his nest. S is for this skeleton whose eyes stare into space. And T is for Transylvania, my very favorite place. Now U is for the undertaker, a friend who lets you down. And V, well, uh, V's for vampire. There's just a few in town. Now W's for witchcraft, at which I'm quite a pro. And X, X marks the spot. Uh, that, that's Eddie's pet, you know. Now Y is for a yard out back, which I really dig the most. And Z, it stands for a zombie. Uh, that's for his cousin to a ghost. Now that completes our dungeon tour. I'm glad you came along. <laughs> Oh, we've covered the whole alphabet in Grandpa's little song. <laughs> oh, but Grandpa's rather sleepy from working in the lab. So if you'll please excuse me. Oh, I think I'll hit the slab. Grandpa. And now, if you're going to take a nap, I think I'll take our friend upstairs to meet Eddie. Okay. And any time you want to hear my alphabet poem again, just open my trap door, drop in. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Grandpa and his corny jokes. You want to know something? He didn't write that poem at all. He has a ghostwriter. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, anyway. Uh, uh, come on, we'll go upstairs to Eddie's room. Now we'll open the trap door. Now there. Here we are in the living room. Oh, uh, just a minute. Forgot to close the trap door. <laughs> darn, darn. I shouldn't have let it slam. Every time I do it, breaks the dishes in the house across the street. <laughs> well, come on, let's go up to Eddie's room, the back way. Through the dining room. Through this door. Now, past the kitchen. Oh, well, Mrs. Munster must be fixing oxtail soup for lunch. Hmm. Well, now, here we go, up the stairs. Now, down this hall. And I open this door, and we go in here. What did you say? This isn't a regular door? It's a, it's a door in a grandfather's clock? Well, of course it is. You see, it's kind of a secret way to get to Eddie's room through the grandfather's clock. Take my hand and follow me. Oh, say, watch out for that swinging pendulum. We have to go through between ticks. It's very annoying if it hits you on the head. But, of course, I've been through here so many times that it never... <laughs> Oh, 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 that's smart. Oh, well, oh. Uh, uh, come on, let's hurry through the secret panel in the back. Oh. Oh. 
Well, here we are in Eddie's room. Eddie? Eddie? Uh, son, where are you? Here I am, Pop. I'm doing my homework. Oh, yes. Um, well, Eddie, come right down off that chandelier and meet this new friend of mine. Okay. I'll be right down. Hi. I'm real glad to meet you, even if your ears don't come to a point. Eddie, that's very rude of you to comment on our visitor's ears. Now, you apologize this instant and say you're sorry. Okay. I'm very sorry that you don't have pointed ears. That's better. I'm really sorry for anyone who doesn't have pointed ears and nice sharp fangs, because I've had them all my life, and I have more fun than any kid I know. I'd hate to look like every other child looks and have the kind of face most folks admire. With pointed ears and fangs, I may get wild looks, but I really love the comments I inspire. Is that a werewolf, people? Ask with apprehension And who's that little vampire Some folks say A face like mine Attracts so much attention I just wish everyone Was born this way All my friends Their brothers and their sisters Should sprinkle water On their ears To make them grow Cause with mine When I install transistors I can tune in programs like a radio. Yes, my fangs and ears are really my best features. With my hair combed like Count Dracula, you see. And I really pity all you other creatures who never will grow up. Who never will grow up. Who never will grow up. Look like me. Well, now, uh, uh, thank you very much, Eddie. I'm sure our friend appreciates the beautiful Munster philosophy in that little song. <laughs> and now, Eddie, I think you'd better get back up on the chandelier and finish your homework. Okay, Pop. <coughs> Goodbye. Goodbye, son. And now, come with me. Uh, oh, no, not that way. We are not going through the grandfather clock again. <laughs> My head still smarts. I'll just push open this secret panel here in the wall. Now, let's see now, which panel is it that opens? I always have to rap on the wall. When you hear the hollow sound, you know that is the secret panel. Here, here this must be the one. Now, to open it, I just push with my hand and... <laughs> Oops, a daisy, wrong panel. Mm. Well, we might as well go through here anyway. It leads to the hall. Just take my hand and follow me. They certainly don't build walls the way they used to. <laughs> well, here we are in the hall. We'll just go downstairs and... Uh... Oh, you hear that? Listen. Uh, uh, that's my niece Marilyn humming to herself in her room. The poor girl is so unattractive with her big blue eyes and blonde hair and her peaches and cream complexion <laughs> that she's ashamed to go out and be seen. And you know I don't blame her. Let's open her door and see what the unfortunate girl is singing to herself. But be very quiet. Shh, shh, shh. When will I find a boy for me? I'm blue and sad as a girl can be I want to cry cause the fact is I am not like the rest of the family Aunt Lily's hair is long and black It hangs like cobwebs down her back Uncle Herman's face has poise and grace But the charms of the monsters are what I lack The boys I meet are sweet and gallant Till they come to call Then they see me next to my uncle and aunt and dive right over the garden wall I long for love 
so hopefully but a wedding gown is not for me my name is mud and i'm just a dud cause i'm not like the rest of the family well no oh, oh goodness no Let's close the door. <laughs> you know, it's really very sad about Marilyn, but I guess having a family as handsome and attractive as we Munsters are would make any girl feel plain and unattractive. <laughs> well, I guess maybe I better get you home now. Your parents might be worried about you. So, here we go, right down the front stairs. It was certainly very nice of you to drop in. Oh, say, I want to warn you about these stairs. There's a loose step here, and if you don't know about it like I do, you're liable to... Oh, oh, oh! Herman, I was wondering if you... Oh, Herman, get up off the floor. You are always such a show-off when we have company. Oh, well, I'm, I'm sorry, Lily. Uh, well, our guest has seen the whole house and is ready to go home now. <laughs> oh, fine. I hope you enjoyed your visit to the Munsters, and please come again soon. Very soon. Oh, oh, uh, let me open the door for you. Now, don't forget, any time you're passing by, we'd love to have you drop in. Just use this big door knocker like this. When you're passing by the Munsters, you will give us such a thrill If you'll just walk up and knock upon our door It's a lovely place to visit if you've got some time to kill And it's not like any house you've seen before Out in back the wolves are howling Shrieking bats fly overhead and when we give a party, we really give a party. It's, it's guaranteed, guaranteed enough to wake the dead. Don't wait to be invited. Simply step right up and knock. Oh, so lightly and politely on our door. We'll be happy and delighted if we hear your gentle knock. Oh, oh so, so lightly, lightly and, and politely on our door. door. Oh, so lightly and politely on our door. Hi there. This is Herman Munster. Now, I guess all of you have your favorite Munster story, but I thought you might like to hear mine. Well, it began one day when little Eddie came home from school very excited because all the other kids kept bragging about the camping trips their parents took them on. Well, Lily, Grandpa, and I agreed that a camping trip would be fun, and I thought it would be a great idea for the Munsters to go out and meet nature face to face. <laughs> Our niece Marilyn had to stay home and study for exams, but the next morning Eddie and Grandpa and Lily and I loaded our car with tents and fishing poles and camping equipment and even some snowshoes and water skis. <laughs> Grandpa, of course, insisted on taking his electric chair along. It was really a nuisance, but Grandpa gets such a charge out of it. <laughs> uh, anyway, we drove out of town and hit the highway for Shadow Pine Lake, a beautiful spot in the National Forest. When we stopped at the park entrance to get our camping permit, the two rangers there must not have been feeling very well because when we gave them the money for the permit, they looked positively green. But they led us through anyway, and we found a beautiful campsite at the edge of Shadow Pine Lake. While I was pitching the tent, Grandpa complained about me pounding the stakes. <laughs> Can you imagine? He said it gave him heartburn. <laughs> but I finally got the tent pitched, and sure enough, Lily complained that I had put it in the wrong spot. She wanted it in the shade of a nearby tree. So the only thing I could do was to move it. I tell you, those giant redwood trees are rather heavy. But I finally moved this one to a spot that suited Lily, and we settled down for a nice weekend of camping. <laughs> Eddie, of course, right away wanted to catch some fish, so I showed him how to cast the line from the shore. And you know, it was really great fishing, because in a minute I reeled in this beautiful cooked fish that looked as though it had just come out of the frying pan. 
and the next time I cast a line, I reeled in a very tasty barbecued chicken. <laughs> and I told Lily and Grandpa this was the greatest fishing spot I'd ever seen. Well, uh, that night, after Eddie had gone to bed and closed the lid on his sleeping bag, Grandpa, Lily, and I sat around the campfire telling stories. And while we were sitting there, we heard some wolves howling in the woods. And Grandpa got very homesick for the old country. In fact, when we went to bed, he insisted on staying up a little while longer to listen to the call of the wild. And you know something? Next morning, when we looked for Grandpa, he was missing. And his sleeping bag hadn't even been slept in. <laughs> As we were trying to figure out what to do... Eddie turned on his portable radio, and the news reports said that the forest rangers had captured a full-grown wolf during the night. Well, what made it so unusual was that the wolf was a rare species that only lived in the wilds of Transylvania. Well, you could see what had happened. Sure. Grandpa couldn't resist the call of the wild, and in the night he must have turned himself into a wolf to join his friends in the woods. Hmm. The radio said the wolf was being held at the ranger headquarters. But when Lily went there, she had a great deal of trouble. She told the man that she'd come to claim the wolf, and he said, Do you mean it's your wolf? And Lily said, No, it's my father. Well, for some reason or other, the forest ranger thought this was rather strange, but he did agree to let Lily go out back and look at the wolf they'd captured during the night. When Lily saw Grandpa standing in that cage on all fours, she was really angry and especially angry when she found out that the forest rangers would not let her take Grandpa home with her. They said this particular wolf was in the care of the park department and was being shipped to the New York Zoo the next day. <laughs> now, when Lily came back to the camp and told me this story, I realized it was time for me to spring into action. So, that night, I sneaked back to park headquarters and found Grandpa's cage. There he was, sitting there and scratching the back of his neck with his hind leg, just as though nothing had happened. Hmm. Well, I was so angry, I picked up Grandpa by the scruff of the neck and carried him back to camp. And you know what? It turned out that Grandpa had forgotten how to change himself back into a person. So, when we finally got home to Mockingbird Lane, I gave the wolf a drink from a mixture in Grandpa's lab. It was a uh, magic mixture. It was supposed to de-wolf him. Well, Grandpa lapped it up, but you know, nothing happened. He kept right on being a wolf. While we were wondering what to do, a stray cat ran past the window and Grandpa chased it across the front yard. That's when the de-wolfing potion took effect. <laughs> and all of a sudden, there was Grandpa, his old self, running across the lawn on all fours. <laughs> and you know something? He didn't remember a thing that happened, and when he asked what happened, Lily and Eddie and I decided we just didn't have the heart to tell him. <laughs> oh, say... By the way, I hope if he ever asks you, you won't tell him either. You see, he might think it was so much fun he'd want to do it all over again. <laughs> this is Lily Munster. And I think my favorite Munster story concerns the time Herman bought himself a two-way shortwave radio. Oh, he just loved it. And he got so excited, trying to talk to other ham operators and ships at sea. Herman even had the nerve to sing on his radio. And another ham operator in Australia cut him off right in the middle of my mother's eyes. <laughs> well, everything was fine until two boys in the neighborhood, Roger and Walt, got a two-way walkie-talkie and began to play a game, pretending they were flying saucer pilots talking to their home base on Mars. Now, when Herman tuned in on the conversation between these two boys, he believed every word they said. He thought they were real Martians. <laughs> Herman cut in telling them that he was talking from planet Earth. Of course, the spacemen, Roger and Walt, thought Herman was some other boy with a walkie-talkie joining in the game. They told Herman they had to return to Mars, but said they would contact planet Earth again tomorrow at the same time. Well, <laughs> Herman is such a trusting soul. He was sure he'd been talking to actual spacemen. I told him it couldn't be true. But he wouldn't listen to me. The next day, Herman got even more excited when the two spacemen told him that they had made an actual landing on the planet Earth with their flying saucer. 
Herman wanted to contact the Air Force immediately and report an unidentified flying object, but Grandpa said they'd have to have some real evidence first. Well, Grandpa got out his old radio direction finder from the laboratory, and he and Herman went out that night trying to track down the spaceman's ship. That direction finder led them all over town, and finally it led them to the vacant lot. There in the moonlight were Roger and Walt with their toy spaceship. But leave it to my Herman to mistake them for real Martians. When Herman and Grandpa spoke to the children, the two boys took off like a streak. Herman said to Grandpa, nah, I guess they're not used to Earth people. Anyway, before they left, Grandpa and Herman took a photograph of the spaceship as proof for the Air Force. When the Air Force saw the picture, they said they would check into it and see if it was really a flying saucer. Well, you know Herman. The next day, he couldn't wait to get on that ham radio again. But Roger had told his father what had happened the night before and about the big wise guy kid who was stringing them along on the walkie-talkie. So, when Herman got on the radio, Roger's father answered. And Herman said, Is this the head Martian? And Roger's father said it sure was. And if he ever met the earth creature face to face, he would break his arm off and shove it down his throat. Of course, Herman was frightened. <laughs> you know what a big coward he is. And he told Roger's father on the radio, you don't even know who I am, and you'll never find me. Yeah, so there. <laughs> this made Roger's father very angry. And he told Herman he really was the head Martian, and just for that he would have to blow up the earth. Herman quickly shut off the radio, and shaking like a leaf, he ran upstairs screaming, The world is coming to an end, and it's all my fault! And to show you how scared he was, do you know what that Herman did next? He jammed Marilyn and little Eddie and me into our hall closet to hide us all, and to wait for the world to come to an end. Can you imagine anything so silly? <laughs> well, luckily Grandpa showed up with the report from the Air Force. After checking the photograph, they told him the flying saucer from Mars was just a toy that was sold in every department store in the country. And you should have been there to see the expression on Herman's face when he looked at the picture. And there, printed right on the spaceship, were the words, Made in Japan. <laughs> I tell you, after this, the only things I'm going to let Herman listen to on the radio are the weather reports. <laughs> Here I am again, old Grandpa Munster, <laughs> back in his laboratory. Say, did you ever see your mother watching those cooking shows on television? I'm sure you have. Well, I thought it would be fun if I showed you what was cooking down here in my dungeon by making one of my favorite recipes for you. I'm going to show you how to make a batch of Grandpa's do-it-yourself magic potion. First, you need a plain, ordinary witch's cauldron like this. Now, I open my mystical magic cookbook containing all sorts of spells, potions, magic, and assorted feats of ledger domain. <laughs> ledger domain. That's a very expensive word that means magic. In fact, it's so expensive, I can hardly ever afford to use it. But for you, nothing is too good. So I'll say it again. Major domain. Uh, I mean, ledger. No, uh, ledger de... No, no, no. <laughs> you know, I've got news for you. It's not only expensive, it's impossible to pronounce. I just can't say ledger domain at all. Well, to begin the recipe for Grandpa's do-it-yourself magic potion, first we need the ingredients. Do you know what ingredients are? Ingredients are the stuff that when you don't have any, you can't use to make anything out of. Or something like that. So, now that my witch's cauldron is all ready, let's put in the first ingredient. One spoonful of well-seasoned, 
powdered nightingale's tongues. Here they are in this bottle. Let me take the cork out. Listen to that. These nightingale's tongues aren't well seasoned at all. They're still chirping. I'd better put them back to age a few hundred years longer. Instead of nightingale's tongues, I'll pour in some magic Transylvanian swamp water, about a gallon's worth. Say, that's fresh from the swamp, all right. If you drank that stuff, you'd really have a frog in your throat. <laughs> now, a half a pint of roast beef gravy. Well, I mean, if we're gonna make a magic potion, there's no law against making it taste good. You know, I had to go out in the woods and catch four full-grown wild roast beefs to get that little bit of gravy. Well, now, let's see. The next ingredient. It says here, one pinch of powdered toadstools picked at midnight under a full moon in a graveyard that's haunted by ghosts that are members in good standing of the Graveyard Haunting Ghost Union Local Number 702. Well, I just happen to have a whole jar full of that. There. Now, one pinch of salt and one pinch of wolf bait. Oh! Wow! <laughs> Oops. Sorry. I guess I pinched a wolf bane too hard. Now, let's see what else the recipe calls for in this magic potion. Oh, yes. A sprinkling of stardust. A shaker full of happy dust. Oh, that dust is not just happy. It's hilarious. <laughs> now, some powdered unicorn horn. You know, it's very hard to get unicorn horn. Oh, it's easy to get candy corn or a rose bush thorn, but it's very hard to get unicorn corn. Now, uh, let's see. Oh, yes, a pillow full of chicken feathers. A reverse gear out of an Essex. I'll drop that in. Three drops of a woman's tears. And the final ingredient, a gallon of water from Niagara Falls. That's everything. And I have it all mixed together in the witch's cauldron. You won't believe this, but some people tell me it's dangerous to fool around with magic potions and mixtures. And they say if you mix up the wrong chemicals, you'll get an explosion. Well, just to show you that nothing like this could ever happen to old Grandpa Munster, I'm going to light a fire under this cauldron like this. There we are. And now I'm going to stir it all up with this paddle to prove that this mixture is the safest thing that anyone could... Well, so much for Grandpa's do-it-yourself magic potion. Would you excuse me while I look in the yellow pages for someone to scrape me off the wall? Uh -huh.